Christian burial, when she willfully seeks her own salvation? I'll tell thee she is. Therefore, dig her grave straight. The crowner hath sat on her and finds it Christian burial. How can that be, unless she drowned herself in her own defense? Why, she's found so. It must be se offendendo. It cannot be else, for here lies the point. If I drown myself wittingly, it argues an act, and an act hath three branches. It is to act, to do, to perform. Argal, she drowned herself wittingly? Nay, but here you good man. Give me leave. Here lies the water, good. Here stands the man, good. If the man go to the water and drown himself, it is willy-nilly, he goes, mark you that. But if the water come to him and drown him, he drowns not himself. Argal, he that is not guilty of his own death, shortens not his own life. But, is this law? <laughs> Aye, Mary, is it? Crowner's quest law. Well, you have the truth on it. If this had not been a gentlewoman, she should have been buried out of Christian burial. Why, there thou sayest. And the more pity that great folk have countenance in this world to drown or hang themselves more than they're even Christian. Come, my spade. There's no ancient gentlemen but gardeners, ditchers, and grave makers. They hold up Adam's profession. Was he a gentleman? He was the first that ever bore arms. Why he had not? What, art a heathen? How dost thou understand the scripture? The scripture says, Adam digged. Could he dig without arms? <laughs> I'll put another question to thee. If thou answerest not to the purpose, confess thyself. Go to! What is he that builds stronger than the mason, the shipwright, or the carpenter? The gallows man. For that frame outlives a thousand tenants. I like thy wit well, in good faith. The gallows does well, but how does it well? It does well to those that do ill. Now, thou dost ill to say that the gallows is built stronger than the church. Argal, the gallows may do well to thee. To it again, come. Who builds stronger than the mason, the shipwright, and the carpenter? I tell me that, and I'm yoke. Mary, now I can tell. To it. Yes, I cannot tell. Cudgel thy brains no more about it, for thy dull ass will not bend its pace with beating. And when you are asked the question next, say, a grave maker. The houses he makes last till doomsday. <laughs> <laughs> Go, get thee in, and fetch me a stoop of liquor. Has this fellow no feeling of his business? He sings while grave making. Custom hath made it in him a property of easiness. Tis even so, the hand of little employment hath deigned to your sense. That skull had a tongue in it, and could sing once. How the knave jowls it to the ground as if poor Cain's jawbone, that did the first murder. Why, that may be the page of a politician, one that might o which this ass now o'erreaches, one that might circumvent God, might it not? It might, my lord. Or of a courtier, might it not? Aye, my lord. And now my lady Ma worms chapless and knocked about the sconce with sexton spade. Here is fine revolution, and we had tricked to see it. There's another. Why, may that not be the skull of a lawyer? Where be his quiddities now, his quillities, his cases, his tenures, his tricks? Why does he suffer this mad knave to knock about the sconce with dirty shovel and not give him action of his battery? Huh. My lord? Dost thou think that parchment is made of sheepskins? Aye, my lord, and of calfskins, too. There are sheep and calves which take assurance in that. I will speak to this fellow. Whose grave is this, sirrah? Mine, sir. I think it be thine indeed, for thou liest in it. 
You lie out on it, sir, and therefore it is not yours. For my part, I do not lie in it, yet it is mine. Thou liest in it, to be in it, and say it is thine. Tis for the dead, not for the quick. Therefore thou liest. Tis a quick lie, sir. Twill away again, from me to you. What man is to be buried here? No man, sir. What woman, then? None, neither. Who is to be buried here? One that was a woman, sir, but rest her soul. She's dead. <laughs> How absolute this knave is. We must speak by the card, or equivocation will undo us. How long hast thou been grave maker? Of all the days of the year, I came to it that day our last King Hamlet or came Fortinbra. How long is that since? Cannot you tell that? Every fool can tell that. Twas the very day that young Hamlet was born. He that is mad and sent into England. I, Mary, why was he sent to England? Well, because he was mad. He will recover his wits there. Or if he do not, tis no great matter there. Why? Twill not be seen in him. There, the men are as mad as he. How came he mad? Very strangely, they say. How strangely? Faith, e'en with losing his wits. Upon what ground? Why, here in Denmark. Mm. I have been sexton here, man and boy, thirty years. How long must a man lie in the earth ere he rots? Faith, if he be not rotten before he die, as we have many pocky courses nowadays that will scarcely hold the laying in, he will last you some eight year or nine year. A tanner will last you nine year. Why he more than the other? Why, sir, his hide is so tanned with his trade, he will keep out water a great while, and your water is your sore decayer of your horse and dead body. Why, here's a skull now that hath lie in the earth three and twenty years. Whose was it? A horse and mad fellow's it was. Whose do you think it was? Nay, I know not. A pestilence on him for a mad rogue. He poured a flagon of Rhenish on my head once. This same skull, sir, was Yorick's skull, the king's jester. This? And that. Let me see. Alas, poor Yorick. I knew him, Horatio. A fellow of infinite jest, of most excellent fancy. He hath bore me on his back a thousand times. And how abhorred in my imagination it is. My gorge rises at it. Here are hung those lips that I have kissed, I know not how oft. Where be your jibes now, your gambles, your songs, your flashes of merriment? that were wont to set the table on roar. Not one to mock your own grinning? Quite chapfallen? Now, get thee to my lady's chamber. Tell her, let her paint an inch thick. To this favor she must come. Make her laugh at that. For thee, Horatio, tell me one thing. What's that, my lord? Dost thou think Alexander looked to all this fashion in the earth? Even so, my lord. And smelt so? Ah! Even so. To what base uses we must return? Imperious Caesar, dead and turned to clay, might stop a hole to keep the wind away. Oh, that that earth which kept the world in awe might stop a hole to expel the winter's flaw. Toward to consider too curiously to consider so. No, Faith, not a jot. But soft, but soft, a while. Here comes the king, the queen, the courtiers. And who is this they follow? And when such maimed rights, this doth betoken that the course they followed did with desperate hands pursue the own life. Twas of some estate. Couch we while and mark. What ceremony else? That is Laertes, a very noble youth. Mark. What ceremony else? Her obsequies have been as far and large as we have worn. Her death was doubtful, and with that great command or sways the order. 
she should, in the ground, unsanctified and lodged till the last trumpet. For charitable prayers, shards, flints, and pebbles should be thrown on her. Yet here she is allowed the virgin's prance, remain instruments, and the bringing home of bell and burial. Must there no more be done? No more be done. We should profane the service of the dead, and sing a requiem such rest to her as to peace parted souls. Lay her in the earth, and from her fair and unpolluted flesh may violet spring. I tell thee, churlish priest, a ministering angel shall my sister be, when thou lies Talon. What? The fair Ophelia? Sweet to the sweet, farewell. I hope thou should have been my Hamlet's wife. I thought thy bride bed to have decked sweet maid, and not have strewed thy grave. O oh, treble woe, fall ten times treble on that cursed head, whose wicked deed thy most ingenious sense hath deprived thee of. Hold off the earth while, till I have caught her once more in mine arms. Now pile your dust on the quick and dead, till up this flat a mountain you have made, to overtop old Pelion, or the skyish head of blue Olympus. What is he, whose grief bears such emphasis, whose phrase of sorrow conjures the wandering stars and makes them stand like wonder-wounded hearers? This is I, Hamlet the day. The devil take my soul! Thou prayest not well. I for thee, take thy fingers from my throat. For though I am not splendid and rash, I have yet in me something dangerous which let thy mind fear. Hold off thy hand! Put them asunder! Gentlemen! Good my lord, be quiet. Why, I will fight him upon this theme until my eyelids no longer wag. Oh, my son, what theme? I loved Ophelia. Forty thousand brothers could not with all their quantity of love make up my sum. Uh, what would thou do for her? Oh, he's mad, Laertes. For the love of God, bear him. Smoots, show me what thou would do. Would weep, would fight, would fast, would tear myself? Would drink up Isle? Eat a crocodile? I'll do it. Dost thou come here to whine? To outface me with leaping in her grave? Be buried quick with her, and so will I. And if thou prate of mountains, let them throw millions of acres upon us until singeing his pate against the burning zone make us like a wart. Aye, and if thou mouth I'll rant as well as thou. This is mere madness, and thus a while the fit will work on him. Anon, as patient as a female dove, when that her golden couplets are disclosed, his silence will sit drooping. Hear me, sir. What is the reason you use me thus? I loved you ever. But it is of no matter. Let Hercules himself <coughs> do what he may. The cat will mew, and the dog will have his day. I pray thee, good Horatio, wait upon him. Strengthen your patience in our last night's speech. We will put the matter to the present push. Good Gertrude, set some watch over your son. This grave will have a living monument. An hour of quiet thereby shall we see. Until then, in patience, our proceeding be. <laughs> <laughs>